Hey legends, and welcome back to the sim racing channel, where we do silly things to get views. Today, we're asking the question, can you mount a high-end direct drive racing wheel to a cheap stand? So without further ado, make sure to smash subscribe to stay up to date with all future sim racing news and reviews, and let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are in the brand new Zandvoort GP circuit in the mighty R Factor 2. What this is going to constitute is the easy part of our test. So left foot brake, right foot throttle, really not putting that much strain on the chassis other than the forces that it has to convey through the force feedback motor on the base. Uh, no heel and toe, no external shifting, nothing crazy going on. So just the bare basics. Let's see how it handles this. But before we get out of pit lane, that's a pretty great start, isn't it? So let's see how that treats us. Our factor, of course, having that very interesting clutch behavior. You kind of have to over rev the car just to be sure. All right, let's see how we go. Well, we're getting the road detail. That's certainly coming through. That mighty R Factor 2 force feedback, pulling its weight with cold tires. We're going to take it a bit easier than we would otherwise. <laughs> that curb rendering as good as always. So I'm, I'm definitely getting the fine detail through the wheel. Um, I've got to say that there's a certain, there's a strange floppiness to it when the wheel fights me when the downforce kicks in at high speeds. It's a weird kind of, it's very hard to explain. It's almost like there's a rubbery sensation over the whole driving experience. Now with the counter steer, you're kind of always fearing that you're gonna just launch the whole, the whole array, the cockpit and everything in the other direction. So it's almost like there's an extra onus to drive smoothly could be a good or a bad thing depending on how you see it. This track of course being one that's uh, as is customary for me apparently with this channel. I only learned yesterday but I quite enjoy like most circuits. Again I blame the Nordschleife and you know wasting the last three years of my life just learning that track in and out. So so far so good actually I was expecting a lot worse. Let's see how it handles a more flying lap. Oh, that, that rubbery sensation. Almost like there's a centering spring force kicking in. And trust me, there, there isn't on the settings, I've made sure. But it's not the most pleasant sensation in the world. Very cool smooth flow to this circuit, isn't there? Those rumble strips feel amazing in this game. Doesn't matter what track, doesn't matter what car. It's one of those things that RF2 just nails every time. You can tell whenever there's a surface change underneath the wheels. It's got AMS 2 beat in that regard for sure at the moment. Right, certainly not the quickest lap of all time, but enough to tell that, you know what? It, the, the rig actually handled this one okay. I didn't feel it slipping away from me, I didn't feel things moving around. The, the main, I guess, you know, other than that whole thing going on, I could feel that rubbery sensation. I think that's probably, as I turn in, this probably, the, the, the actual base plate that you mount everything to probably starts to flex and kind of bend in the other direction, so you don't have a sense of rigidity. There's, there isn't a sense of confidence when the downforce kicks in. 
so I would certainly not recommend this for high stakes driving, but in a pinch I guess you can get away with driving open wheelers like this, and I would probably suggest turning down the force feedback uh, even further than I did to make this work. So now let's move on to the hard test, namely an open wheeler in an old school muscle car doing a hill climb track, heel and so with external shifting, let's see how that goes. Okay, so here we are in Beeman G Drive, also known as the world's most realistic road car drift simulator. So let's see how this treats us. We're going to be using the clutch, we're going to be using a bit of heel and toe, as rusty as I am, and a bit of external shifting as well, just to add some extra weight to the experience. Ah, wish me luck. Uh. Steering wheel started with the wrong lock. Uh, that's always a good beginning. All right, here we go. All right, so far so good. I can feel myself pushing myself back on this sweet, sweet rocking chair I have set up. Always great when the braking is such a dynamic experience. Uh. It's being very much a uh. springy, springy 70s based road car. Now, to those guys who've watched the uh, the sim racer comparison that we did a few weeks back and was saying that Dirt Rally 2 is in fact a very difficult game that's not forgiving at all. Give this a go and let me know how you feel. Oh dear lord. I can feel the entire chassis just oh, moving every single time I rotate the wheel. There's absolutely no precision anywhere. I would have thought that dish would have written the car off. Here we are, robust 70s beasts. <laughs> that beam NG brake feel. Obviously with the full 1080 degrees of steering wheel lock. Already losing my ability to speak, always a good sign. All right, on the dirt, flat out. <laughs> oh, my kingdom for some 540 degree steering lock. Oh, that weight, that weight of the car, that stock 70s suspension, that lack of any precision and driving feel. Alright, let's see if we can do this. Difficult corner to negotiate. So, yeah, once again, play your favorite rally simulator and then play this and let me know how you feel. <laughs> No sim on the market quite renders weight transfer like this one does. Truly remarkable game. Uh, certainly the wealth of inputs required uh, enough to work out your cardiovascular workout needs for the day. Oh dear lord. Oh man, okay. And uh, obviously it has that that actual rally damage model. Uh, let's, let's give that one more attempt. <sighs> well, I still have some energy left in me. I remember what button actually begins this whole thing. And, uh... Okay. Alright. Correct the wheel lock a bit earlier this time. That dynamic braking experience. Try not to total the car at the ditch. Ah, uh, just complete inability to finesse the wheel. Feel like I'm moving the entire assembly. The entire thing flexes every single time I try to counter steer. This is very much like a live out your Dukes of Hazard fantasies simulator. You can see just by the sheer wealth of inputs how amazingly fun this game is to play. Stop myself from spinning the car. Come on, get some grip, baby. This is not your daddy's GT3 simulator, that's for sure. <sighs> yeah, I guess. Easy is good. Actually getting across the finish line is half the battle. So, uh, this is certainly where the rig starts to show its... Uh, you know... I was gonna say it's inflexibility, but it's really the opposite, isn't it?
feel like I have some inbuilt safety mechanism that's refusing to let me heal and tow correctly, just on account of the fact that I know I'm just going to destroy everything in this room. There's so many inputs required to keep this thing on the road, it's unbelievable. It's such an interactive driving experience. Oh my god, I can feel myself pushing the chair back every single time I do that. Every downshift I get a little bit further from the pedals. Ah, oh, come on. You can do it, baby. You can do it. Oh, so rewarding and fun when you can actually put this together. And then, like a bad stroke of luck will just end your whole run. Pretty much like real rally. Uh, come on. Just keep it on, baby. Keep it going. Oh, there we go. Oh, what an experience. So... I know that this is about the, the wheel stand and its relative incompatibility with the... the oh, no, 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 no. Ah, uh, there it is. Whew. Well, I want to blame it all on the wheel stand, but I can't. This game is tremendously hard to play under these circumstances. Um, I would love to do a video featuring BeamNG for you guys. I honestly think it's the way of the future. Once they dial this thing in, it's going to be basically the template for all racing simulators. Unbelievable sense of weight transfer, unbelievable dynamism in, in everything. The chassis flex, the tire flex. Anyway, that's beside the point. The point is, look at that. That is, uh, that is not where you want to be, so let's get to our summation. Let's talk about uh, everything that we've learned during this experience, and thank you guys for joining me on this rather strange journey. So, to circle back around to our question, can you mount a high-end direct-drive racing wheel onto a cheap stand? Yeah, sure, why not? Should you? Nah, don't do it. In all seriousness, Next Level Racing do not recommend mounting a DD wheelbase to the Next Level Racing wheel stand. I personally wouldn't recommend using this wheel stand, period. It had too much flex even with my T500 RS. If you're looking at the Next Level Racing ecosystem, look at the wheel stand DD. It's a far better product, uh, way less if not no flex whatsoever. It's made for direct drive wheels. It'll work great even with your belt and gear driven wheels. If you've got the spare change, you may want to look into the GT Track, which is their full cock bit offering based on the wheel stand DD. So until next time, make sure to smash that subscribe, stay up to date with all future sim racing news and reviews. If you didn't like it, that's completely understandable. Make sure to smash that dislike twice to show me who's boss. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.